Hello good people, uh, before we begin, short disclaimer, this is not a tutorial, this is just a breakdown of the effects that I used in the uh, Colorado Springs video. I got tons of requests for this breakdown. Let's jump into the premiere, shall we? Okay, that's more like it. Let's roll the clip. For those of you who are worried, I'm fine. I'm not really inside a computer, so don't freak out. Okay, let's do this. So the first one is just the basic subtitles. Uh, there's nothing really special about it. There's a simple fade in. I just mask them out along with the uh, curtains opening. As you can see, there's the mask and it's just tracking the curtains as they are opening. So the next effect you asked about is the uh, building revealing from behind this one. What it is is just simple masking. So what I've got here is four layers. The first one is just a glass texture set to blend mode screen to give it so that sort of the fade out look. Um, each of the buildings is uh, masked out even individually. There's a mask uh, path set on the opacity, not on the transform. There could be a mask here, but that would be moving along with the uh, transform effect and we don't want that, we, do, we want the mask uh, in place. So that's it, that's, that's just it. Okay, so the next effect you asked about is this one. So what it is, is just a basic replacement done from inside the After Effects. Uh, what I did first was uh, grab the screenshot, uh, cleaned up this whole uh, sheet. This is what it looks like. On top of that, a bit of logos that are changing depending on the, uh, the music. Inside this layer, I've got just logos lined up. Nothing special about it. Uh, just as a tip, I sometimes import the music so it's easier to adjust the effects to the music. I tracked the camera in the first part of the shot, created a solid, replaced it with a blank sheet that I showed you, put the logos in order. So after that, we've got the next effect, which, which is that Budweiser logo blinking. What I did here was just take this next scene, uh, mask out only the this part of the logo, put it over the top, switched the blend mode to lighten, and that way only the lighter parts showed up, made it appear and disappear to the music. As a transition, I just uh, rescaled it and repositioned it back to the, its original size, so it looks like it's coming from the from the actual sheet. And that's it, basically. You thought I was smarter, huh? There you go. To the next one. So here there's nothing really special. It's just simple time remapping. I sped up the clip here, going away from that scene. And here starts the next one. You can see the cut here. So that was done as well from inside the After Effects. So I made this one using Video Copilot's uh, Saber plugin. It's set to Neon Preset uh, and I animated uh, the start offset from 100 to 0 to have it follow these uh, mask paths. To understand how this really works, I will send a link to Video Copilot's channel. Andrew Kramer, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. 
So the base of that transition are just two shots, one close up, one wide shot. This first one actually uh, was filmed on that side, but that doesn't really matter. So what I did to move that P, I animated the masks that are here. Uh, you can see mask path goes from here to there. I just reduced the glow intensity a bit because it was uh, too intense on that scene. I also split the saber uh, layer in two so I could track it in two different shots. So there was the first tracker and here was the other. So then I parented them both. So I have them moving along with the shot. The next one is just that car moving and what it is is just simple mask following the car as it drives by not the best one but well okay off to the next one uh, so this was this morph transition which was done from inside the after effects and you can see that it's not only the car changing but also the whole environment and that's because these were all different scenes. So what you do is just match the two scenes using the liquify tool and that's it. And then you animate the opacity from one to another and you've got yourself a transition. So this is what it looks like when you uh, liquify the whole thing. And this is what the other layer looks like when you um, change the opacity to see what you're doing. So that's it. Then you just animate the opacity from 0 to 100 on the top one and from 100 to 0 on the bottom one and that's, there you have it. So off to the next one. Again guys, like I said, it's not going to be a tutorial per se. This is just how to. I'm showing you what you don't know instead of showing you how to do this. So you can Google by yourself. These are just different freeze frames from uh, the same composition. So when you solo it, you can see that this is one, this is one, this is the other, and that's the main shot. So as you can see, the layer disappears once he reaches it, so it looks like it's disappearing along with him. The whole clip was also flipped horizontally to match the direction the, the previous car was going, so this is that effect. Okay, two more to go. The first one is that clock speeding up. So what I did is uh, I took a still frame from the video and from inside the Photoshop, I cut the small hand, the long hand and the face. I tracked the camera and replaced the face of the watch here. Uh, I did a slight fade out and color correction because for some reason it's not matching with what I got from inside the Photoshop. Then after I replaced it, I just animated the rotation of the clock. Let me reveal this. That's the point where the rotation starts and it slowly and gradually speeds up to complete a total of two rotations for the small one and eight rotations for the big one. And that's it. Okay, the last one. So let me isolate this because uh, this is a completely different effect. It's just an isolated Humpty Dumpty using the roto brush. Then I use the shutter effect on the nested clip. I use the pattern glass. Mostly what I played with was the physics parameters. And then I reversed the whole clip and this is what I got. After that, I nested the clip and added force motion blur because for some reason it doesn't cooperate with the uh, time remapping tool. And that's it. That's the whole clip. I contemplated having the effect go such as this, but I thought the whole video would look smoother. The clock starts turning, the Humpty Dumpty comes back to life. After that, it's all premiere, some time remapping, some quick clips. Told you guys, it's really not that complicated. Play around in After Effects. There are a lot of things you can do, even with basic knowledge like mine. And the most important part, just enjoy yourself, because this is really fun.